Welcome to Bronze Nation TV. Today we're going to be talking about the Philippines and Mexico and the history they share since 1521. Mexico and the Philippines have more in common than history books mention. Unfortunately, this is just another story that's not commonly known between both cultures. Mexicans and Filipinos share a common history, traditions, and customs, which derive from the ties established for over 400 years. This dates back when both countries were part of the Spanish Empire. The similarities began in the year 1521 when the Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés conquered the Aztec Empire. During the same year, Fernandán Magallán conquered and claimed the Philippine Islands for the Spanish crown. In 1543, a Spanish explorer by the name of Ruy López de Villalobos sailed from Jalisco, Mexico to the islands to give them a name. López de Villalobos named the islands Las Islas Filipinas in honor of King Felipe II. 22 years later, General Miguel López de Legazpi claimed the Philippines as a Spanish colony, choosing Manila as its capital. In the same year of 1565, the Spanish initiated the Manila Galleon trade route that lasted for over 250 years until 1815 when the Mexican War of Independence broke out. So let us talk about the collaboration during these 250 years and begin by explaining why the Spanish crown used Mexico City as its central point rather than Spain itself to conquer the islands. Well, it was simple. It was due to distance as it took almost a year for the conquistadores to sail from Spain to the Philippine Islands, where it only took four months for them to sail out of Acapulco, Mexico. Due to the grand exchange between Mexico and the Philippines in those days, many cultural traits were adopted by one another. Tagalog, the Philippine language, has more than 10,000 words of Spanish origin and many words coming from Nahuatl, yes, the Aztec language. Both countries are very Catholic and share the same patron saint of La Virgen de Guadalupe and celebrate El Dia de los Muertos, as they call it, Aronopatay. Both Mexicans and Filipinos are extremely hard workers and both value family. Both cultures love to have parties, love music, dancing, and hosting. Filipinos have their own version of menudo, tamales, flan, their pan, chicharron, adobo, etc. Even their currency is named after the Mexican peso. This 250-year bond led to an ethnic and cultural mingling. Many of the Filipino governors were Mexican Creole. Studies show that thousands of mestizos arrived to the islands, as well as a good amount of Filipinos making their way to Mexico. The Filipinos established themselves particularly in the west coast near the port town of Acapulco. Immediately, they introduced some new drinks, food, and cultural games to the Mexicans. They introduced their delicious mangos, which are notorious throughout Mexico and the rest of the world. A game called Cara y Cruz is just a form of heads or tails. The Filipinos are master weavers. They use these skills to make palapas by weaving the palm branches together. These palapas were used for shade and this technique was taught to the Mexicans. Even the word palapas derives from the Filipinos. Since the early Filipino settlers established themselves on the Mexican coast, they were also master fishermen. The Filipinos identified their little fishing boats as pangas. Today, that same word is used in Mexico to identify their fishing boats. In various areas on the coast of Mexico, there's a famous drink called tuba. Tuba was introduced by the Filipinos as well as the coconut trees. This fermented drink is made by extracting the palm sap from the coconut trees. Many historians say that the distillery methods used by the Filipinos were taught to the Mexican natives, making it easier for them to produce tequila. Let's fast forward. World War II, April 30th, 1945. Mexico sent their 201 squadron, also known as the Aztec Eagles. This expeditionary air force was sent to Manila to assist the Filipinos against Japan. The Aztec Eagles flew more than 90 combat missions totaling 1,900 hours of flight time. The 201st Mexican squadron was given credit for putting out of action about 30,000 Japanese troops. Today in Manila, you will find a monument honoring the Mexican pilots for their heroic contributions. Let's fast forward and cross the Mexican border to Delano, California. Many of you have heard of the UFW, the United Farm Workers 
led by Cesar Chavez. But what many of you don't know is that he was not the first to initiate the strikes. It was a Filipino activist by the name of Larry Itlian. Larry Itlian made an appointment to see Cesar Chavez, the leader of the National Farm Workers Association. They met up to come up with a plan that would benefit all workers. They were looking from that $1.20 to $1.40 an hour raise. So Larry Itlian and Cesar Chavez met. They came up with a plan that would be beneficial for all workers. However, that plan consisted of a strike and Chavez said his organization was not ready to go on strike. So the Filipinos decided it was necessary and they did it first. Soon after the Filipinos and Mexicans joined as one on September 16th to picket the Delano growers. On March 17, 1966, they marched from Delano to Sacramento. That initially only had 70 farm workers and volunteers. By the 11th of April, 10,000 supporters had joined them, reaching the steps of the state capitol. A few months after the march, the Filipino Union, the AWOC, Agricultural Workers Organization Committee, and the Mexican Union, the NFW, joined as a single union, which birthed the United Farm Workers Association. So you know the rest of the story. Si se puede. Just know the Filipinos were there with us from the beginning. We thank you for joining Bronze Nation TV on this episode and hope that you subscribe to our channel. Thank you.